Okay, so I'm going to go through the steps of how to do a die hybrid cross, and it's important that you show all your work for these problems, so if you do mess anything up along the way, you can go back and see exactly what step you messed up. Okay, the problem that we have right here, it says in certain bacteria, an oval shape is dominant over a round shape, and thick cell walls are dominant over thin cell walls. What we're going to do here is cross a heterozygous oval thick cell wall bacteria with a round thin cell walled bacteria. This is very similar to the problems you're going to be encountering on your quiz and on the EOC. You have to describe the phenotypes of the offspring, which basically means you have to give us a phenotypic ratio. So step number one, what we're going to end up doing, we'll come over here. Okay, step number one is to figure out what our traits are. So we, we see in the problem it's saying for trait number one, and this is exactly what you should write on your papers. Okay, for trait number one, okay, we have shape. We'll put shape here. And there's two different shapes that bacteria can have. They can be oval, and this is dominant. Or they can be round, and round is recessive. And what we'll use for the oval letter, since this problem doesn't give us any letters to use for the alleles, is this big O. That won't be dominant, so there's two ways to be dominant. You can either be homozygous dominant, which means two big O's, or heterozygous dominant. And both of these will give you okay, an oval shape for bacteria. Now remember to make like over here, you want to make sure that your lowercase letters look different than your uppercase so you don't get confused later on. Now let's come over here for recessive. We'll use this little O for recessive, and there's only one way to be recessive, and that is homozygous recessive. So let's come over here and look at trait number two. Trait number two is going to be for cell walls. So having thick cell walls is dominant over recessive, so thick cell walls is dominant, thin cell walls is recessive, so you make sure you write that down, and the letters that we're going to use for thick, we'll use for this trait, or we're going to use a T, because it's the first letter of the dominant allele, and so there's two ways to have a thick cell wall, homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant, so you can see here both of our different options. And then when we talk about a recessive trait, we're going to use the little t, and again, only one way to be recessive, homozygous recessive. Again, notice how my t over here definitely looks different than my t over here, okay? So that was step number one. Make sure you always do that in the very beginning so you know what you're talking about. Step number two is to figure out Okay, the parents. You need to tell me what your parents are. And the problem will always tell you what the parents are, and lots of times they're not going to tell you uh, big T, big T, and big O, little O. They're going to give you um, homozygous dominant for this trait, heterozygous dominant, or they're just going to say like they did in this problem, heterozygous oval thick-celled and round thin-celled. And they expect you to understand and know because of all this information that we have up top here, because of all of this information, you should be able to figure out what the problem's asking you. So let's go ahead and look at what our parents are going to be. The first parent is heterozygous oval. So parent one, okay, and remember, we have trait one, you get two alleles, and trait two, you have two alleles. So you need to make sure you put them both in there. So trait one, you have two alleles, and trait two, you have two alleles. Okay, and so if it says our parent one is heterozygous oval, that means for trait one, which was up here, which was shape, they're heterozygous oval, so big O, little o, and they are heterozygous thick cell walled for trait two. So that means over here for trait two, still heterozygous, this is for parent one. We're going to cross parent one with parent two. Parent two for I'll have to fix this. Parent two is round and thin walled. Well, if we look over here, there's only one way to be round, and that's two little O's. 
and there's only one way to be thin-walled, and that's two little t's. So they didn't even have to tell us homozygous, heterozygous. They just said round and thin, and we know that those are both the recessive traits, so we know what parent two is. Okay, so that's step number two. Step number three is figuring out your gametes. Okay, and this is where we use our arrows. So number three, step three, is our gametes. And what we're going to end up doing here is taking our arrows, okay, so for parent one, and we'll put parent one on this side of the Punnett square, okay? So for parent one, the big O can go with the big T. So we'd have big O, big T, and you can write the gametes here if you want so you don't get confused, parent one and parent two. So for parent one, we had big O, big T. The big O can go with the little t. Okay, then we move over to this little o, little o with big T. Make sure you make those lowercase letters look different. And then little o, little t. So we're going to plug all of these in over here. So we have big O, big T, big O, little t, little o, big T, and little o, little t. Okay, that's parent one. Now we're going to figure out the gametes for parent two doing the same thing little o, little t, little o, little t, little o, little t, and the last one, little o, little t. You should have all this work on your paper just so you can make sure that if you make some silly little mistake, you know exactly where you made that mistake. So now we're going to plug in these gametes up here, little little o, little t, little o, little t, little o, little t, little o, little t. Okay, that's step number three. Step number four, make sure you label this parent two. So step number four is to actually do your Punnett square. Now before we do our Punnett square, what you should set up, and I, I guess this should be step number four, is, let me erase that. Step number four, I'll go ahead and change that around, should be to figure out what phenotypes are you going to be looking for. And there's always going to be four combinations. Okay? And you want to make sure that you set this up properly. Let's make this a little bit smaller. So our four combinations is going to be for trait one and trait two. So you could be dominant for trait one, which is oval, and you could be dominant for trait two. So you could be dominant, dominant. So in this case, that's going to be oval and thick. That's dominant for both. And you'll leave the space over here so you can fill out the number. The next we can be is dominant for trait one and recessive for trait two. So that means you'll be oval and thin. The next possibility is recessive for trait one and this is always, I'm going to go ahead and write up here, trait one trait two. So if you're recessive for trait one and dominant for trait two, that means you're going to be round and thick. And then recessive for trait one and recessive for trait two. That means round and thin. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can start tallying up our numbers as we put our individuals in these boxes. So now step number five is to do your Punnett square. So do your cross. And that's what's up above. So your cross is up here. You'll go ahead and let's go ahead and use red to show our offspring. These are all the possible offspring. So in this first box, we have big O. You always put trait one first, the two alleles. Big O, little O, big T, little T. See how this is trait one? and trait two, they stay together. Then we go to the next box, big O, little O, big T, big T. And as you're doing this, we should be counting up. This is big O, little O, this is heterozygous dominant, heterozygous dominant for both traits. That means we're gonna be dominant, dominant. We should put a little tally mark here. Then we come over here, same thing. Heterozygous dominant, heterozygous dominant, 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 put another tally mark over here. Okay, and continue on, big O, little O, big T, little T, another tally mark over here, and then big O, 
little O, big T, little T, another tally mark over here. That was pretty simple. Let's move down to the next row. Now we have big O, little O, but this time we have homozygous recessive, two little T's. So this is gonna be dominant for one and recessive for trait two, so that means we're over here. So we have dominant for trait one, this is trait one, and recessive for trait two, oval thin, we have one. If we keep going, we'll notice that each of these, they go little O, heterozygous dominant for trait one, and then over here, little t, little t, recessive for trait two. So we continue to fill that out, that should be right there. And then we do the next box, and we'll start to notice a little pattern here. Because all these gametes up top are all the same, that's gonna pretty much tell us that every little box in this row is gonna be exactly the same. So we're gonna end up with four phenotypes that are dominant for trait one, oval, and recessive for trait two. Let's move down to this one. We have a little o, little o, big T, little t. Now we're recessive for trait one and heterozygous dominant for trait two. So that's what we have, recessive for trait one, dominant for trait two. Now we start tallying over here. And again, very similar. We're gonna see the same pattern. Little o, little o, big T, little t. And if you notice, I'm gonna keep tallying them up as I go along so I don't get lost. This saves you a lot of time on your quizzes, on your EOC. Okay, so we have four of those. We move over to the last one. Okay, little o, and we look up here, little o, and little t, little t, recessive for both. Recessive, 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 recessive. We put the tally mark right here. Little o, little o, little t, little t. Put our tally mark right here. Little o, little o, little t, little t. Another tally mark. Little o, little o, little t, little t. Another tally mark. So our phenotypic ratio, which always has to be in this order, it has to be dominant. How many are dominant dominant? How many are dominant recessive? How many are recessive dominant? And how many are recessive or both? When you write this out, you write it as a ratio. Okay, so one, two, three, four there, always in the same order as we have up here. And our ratio is gonna be, in this case, four, to four, to four, to four, and make sure you descri describe each one. This is oval and thick, and you need to write this on your paper so I, sh I can see on your quiz that you understand. Number two is oval and thin. Number three is round and thick. And then number four is round and thin, recessive for both. Get this out of here. Okay, so this is how you do the Punnett square. If you have all this work on your paper, everything is clearly labeled, you're guaranteed 100% on that problem, and you need to know how to do these crosses. Important thing we need to understand from these dihybrid crosses is which of Mendel's principles does this cross show us? Okay, these crosses are going to show us. Um, two important principles, the law of segregation, because it's showing us that our gametes uh, for our parents, they do separate, um, or the chromosomes that we got from our parents, they do separate when we make our own gametes. It also shows the law of independent assortment, that these different chromosomes and the, the, the traits carried on these chromosomes, okay, are going to sort independently of each other. So that's what we're looking at over here. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope this cleared it up for you.